I want to take another look at Shiny SDR. It's something that was in Dragon OS early on, and then once moved over to GNU Radio 3.8, it didn't really work. Uh, but it was a pretty cool application work. I guess kind of sort uh, similar to Open Web RX, uh, but then again, a little different. So you can see remote application or operation. That's what was uh, interesting to me. Uh, you can set it up and then remotely control it through the web interface. And for the most part, the supported modes um, do work, except for I think the this text here, and I'll show why. Uh, but uh, anyways, you can read about the page and what it does. Um, what we're going to take a look at is adding uh, two additional things to Dragon OS uh, that's not really there right yet, GR Air Modes and GR DSD. Uh, radio Teletype uh, has not been updated to GNU Radio 3.8. Well, actually, there is a branch that, that has been updated, but uh, I've tried it out, and it uh, prevents uh, Shiny SDR from working. So let's get two things set up before we... Uh, install uh, Shiny SDR. I'll just do right here for now for GR Air Modes. Go ahead and make the build directory, change into the build, run CMake, and we won't get the uh, GUI, which we're really, really concerned about because we're on uh, QT5. But uh, let's see, sudo make uh, however many. I guess we don't need sudo since we're not in the source here. <clears throat> so build that. Okay, we'll install it. And we'll run sudo ld config. That'll take care of GR air modes. And then let's take, uh, let's get GR DSD. Do the same thing, we'll get clone. Change into our GR DSD, make a build directory. Change into the build. Let's do CMake. Okay, pretty much got everything we need. install that and again sudo ld config all right I'll clear the screen I should have made this a little bigger we'll take a look at um, let's see shiny SDR we'll go ahead and get clone this actually let's wait a second here Let's open this up because we need to take a look at the pull requests where somebody has provided Python 3 support, and that's where we want to pull from. So we'll go, we'll go over to this guy's um, fork, I guess you'd say, and let's see, should be on Python 3. Do this instead. Change into Shiny SDR. Okay, then we'll jump back over. We'll do a system wide install just to make this easy. Using, we'll do Python 3. Set up, build. It'll grab what's needed. Okay, and then we'll do sudo python3 set up install. This should pull down all the other prerequisites and get it installed. 
All right. Then what you want to do is, um, and really wherever you do this is going to make that uh, directory uh, that we're going to refer to later. And if you can see this, uh, so uh, for example, so shiny SDR, this is going to create it right in this um, directory right here. So just be aware of where you're doing that. So do shiny SDR create. I'll just name it YouTube. That'll create a directory here called YouTube. And you can take a look at the config file. It's going to use the Osmo uh, there before uh, initially. You can set that up. And you can also set up the uh, HTTP endpoint and the information there. And this is going to be the secret that's going to go on after that. Of course, if you uh, really want any security, you're going to need HTTPS if you're access accessing this remotely. I'm just going to be accessing it within the network here. So I've got a, let's see, I've got a HackRF plugged in. And we'll just call on shiny SDR again, and we'll just reference that YouTube directory. It'll start up, and you'll be able to see it'll say visit, and it'll have the URL there. So we'll go ahead and open that up. So now you can see I'm accessing, accessing it on localhost, port 8100 there. Cool thing is, is uh, if you read the Shiny SDR page, it talks about this frequency database and how you can um, import a database over of different frequencies here. So uh, you know that comes that comes in handy here. Right now, it's just uh, WFM. You can see you can pick a couple different sources, um, and then you can adjust as needed uh, some basic settings there. Now, if I left click in this window here, it's going to put a receiver. And let me turn the audio down a little bit. And this is where you can pick um, the different uh, demodulation and features that you want. So let's just try simple um, broadcast FM. So, you know, so now if you port forwarded and had this set up, you could access this uh, remotely and then interface with this. You can turn on and off the different features here. Um, map, if you had the uh, database with a location, it'll pop up on uh, where the uh, stations are at. Uh, some of the other features, though, um, APRS, uh, Mode S. So I still, yeah, I still have a pretty good antenna hooked up here. So if I do... Let's see if I just try this, 1090. Let's say I do mode S. So we'll get some messages decoded, which uh, you can see over here. The uh, mode S uh, messages are decoded. I've not seen uh, ADSB as far as like uh, location come across yet, which I think if it if it did, or at least the way it's explained, it would uh, pop up on the map here where the aircraft are at. So not seen that yet, but I'm seeing mode S messages here. Um, I've also uh, had no problem doing uh, LSB. Um, or USB. I've got a. Um, uh, actually, let's see. I think I can show. I've got a, another antenna here. All right. So, anyways, 
uh, just was kind of messing around here. Um, you're going to have to mess with the settings, especially when you're looking for, um, you know, some broadcasts happening uh, on HF. Um, I know I've listened to it before. You just got to mess with it. I'm still learning about it. Um, WSPR, DSD, so there's DSD modes, um, FM, AM, and then RTL 4 through 3, which is interesting. I, I don't think that there's anything around here in the back end. It will use, you'll see here, registers 122 out of 149 devices. Um, it may be, you can use RTL 4 through 3 with uh, the HackRF, but a lot of times you have to pass across SOPI, so I'm not sure if the HackRF will work by default with here, but the RTL SDR should. So really, I, you know, I'm just thinking about putting this back in now that it seems to be working. Um, and yeah, just looking for any feedback so all right that's kind of how to get that going the other thing I wanted to take a look at is let's see so we went through all of these um, ah, trunk recorder so uh, there is a uh, or has been you can see now going radio 3.8 support and we talked about running on the Ubuntu 20 series uh, but that it didn't compile, um, I've not found that to be the case. So let's pull down Trunk Recorder and take a look. The only th uh, let's see. So if you take a look at the Ubuntu install and then the 20 series, it kind of talks about work in progress and what you need. What I'm going to do is take a look in Trunk Recorder. Let's take a look at the install file. Mm, let's see. Everything's fine here except for I'm going to. Uh, let's see what I want to change. I'm going to. I'm going to take out the lib curl 14 open SSL because I already have uh, a lib curl GNU, uh, whatever it is dev on here and when you install the open SSL it wants to install that and I feel like there's probably another package uh, another piece of software on here and the reason why I installed that so I'm just going to change that and then honestly I'm not too worried about this blacklisting thing of the RTL SDR because I've already done that so I think and even if this is wrong I don't Too big a deal. Um, I don't need a blacklist, so uh, let's go ahead and we'll run the install. You can see it'll pull in a few um, packages here. So the following new packages will be installed. Yep, that's fine. Yeah, this is. let it build. Alright, so it's a finished installed. I didn't have a problem with it building the recorder and then it's going to copy that over and I'll show. Um, so basically it ends in a trunk recorder. So for me it looks like it built uh, fine. Um, you're going to need a config file and uh, have that properly uh, set up. We can take a look at the examples. But you know, they're not uh, configured for my area, of course, but just out of curiosity. Let's do config. The other thing, oops. The other thing is probably going to complain about the. Um, so if you take a look at the. The uh, config file here is set up for an old, so we need LNA, AMP, and VGA, which here, I'm not really sure which one's which, I'm just guessing. But 
but those will need to be updated um, to reflect some newer changes. But it, you know, it looks like it's um, started up, and um, of course, it's not again set up. I don't have just um, the control frequencies and stuff. So, anyways, that's just kind of taking a look at that. Um, any uh, feedback on if anyone follows this and gets it set up before I do and or tested? Uh, that'd be great to know uh, the experiences with it. So again, just two programs looking to um, install in uh, the next release. Uh, I've been able to shrink down about three to 400 megs worth of stuff uh, to free up space for more programs to be installed without losing anything that's already been installed. All right, so thanks. Uh, and, and again, if you find anything wrong with anything that you've tested or any issues, please let me know um, on... Uh, source forge or email or here so I can get things uh, fixed you know time is uh, you know, precious it's a, a, a little harder to um, retest every single thing nowadays which is probably a good thing you know people are getting out of the house and back and, and uh, doing things so that's always a good thing uh, but it makes it a little harder to test everything so all right appreciate the support thank you